I think really down deep what drives me is that I'm just obsessed with this. You know, I love the horses. Um, I love the challenge of making horses better. My name is Laura Kraut. Um, right now I'm in England, Warwickshire, at Nick Skelton's place. I base here in the summers, normally from the middle of April until December time, and then we go back to Florida, Wellington, Florida, where uh, is my sort of home base. We've got probably 30 horses here. I started riding, I think I was born obsessed with horses. My mother was horse crazy, and uh, I think I, I got on a horse probably when I was one or two. It was in my blood. I, I never spent any amount of time without horses or riding. I didn't start riding jumpers until I was 18 or 19 years old, um, but I took to that immediately. Like That for me was just the ultimate. I loved the challenge of it. And um, at the end, I think, though really, what really keeps me going all the time is the idea that there's that diamond in the rough that I might find, you know, some fantastic young horse that um, no one has seen that you can pick up and develop. Probably one of the main ingredients to being in the sport for a long time is, is you have to be very tough mentally and physically, <laughs> but mentally for sure, because there's so many ups and downs. Uh, when I was sort of a young professional starting out when I was 20, 21 years old, you know, I could have either given up or I had to find a way to boost myself up to keep going. There's things that happen throughout your career, even when you're at the top of the sport, where everyone looks at you and says, oh, that must be, you know, that must be fantastic that, that to be at that level. They don't have any worries. Um, it, it, we have a lot of worries because as hard as it is to get up to the top, it's just as hard or even harder to stay there. So with the students that I have, I primarily work with, with the riders that jump at a higher level. Um, for me, it's very easy to keep them hungry because they are hungry. Riding keeps you humble. Uh, just when you think you've got it, you go in and you can be a disaster. Um, and I think for most of the kids, they've, they've got that competitiveness, that hunger, and each time they go in and fail, they come out wanting to go back in and get it right. Absolutely, one million percent, uh, this is not a, a solo sport. Behind every winning combination of horse and rider, there's a team of, you know, many that are behind them, and I'm very fortunate. Everything is, is crucial, like, you know, I even look to um, horseware, you know, like the equipment, the equipment is important. Um, the blankets, the, the fly masks, the sheets that they go out in, you know, keep them happy. All of the equipment that horseware makes is so thoughtful towards helping a rider keep their horses comfortable, fit, and looking good. It's all, it's all important and it lasts. Uh, you know, it's indestructible really. I knew Cedric when I got him when he was seven uh, was going to be a slow developer. Um, I for sure didn't think he would turn into an Olympic gold medalist. I thought I'd be, you know, I thought he'd make a nice, um, hopefully a Grand Prix horse. He was quirky and he had tons of jump, but he was scared of everything and very difficult to ride. And so my hope was that by the time he was 10, I would have him at a level where he could jump a Grand Prix. Um, the fact that he jumped the Olympic games when he was 10 is still mind boggling to me because even as old as 14 and 15 years old, he was still doing wacky, crazy, spooky things that um, he just knows when it's important. He, he turned it on when he was in Hong Kong because he knew he had to, but uh, he's thrown me off many other times when, when he had the opportunity. Um, but yeah, you just have to uh, be strong and, and, and persevere and have patience. <laughs>